Welcome to the fourth part of our Vespa 101 series. In this part, we deal with the modern Vespa. Since I have no clue about this topic, we brought in an expert, like in the previous episodes. Fortunately, we found one right here at SIP. This is Stefan, and Stefan really knows a lot about modern Vespa. He will guide us through the video. Could you please introduce yourself? I'm Stefan. I've been at SIP for around 20 years now. I'm working in sales, and I was already involved with the automatic models in the mid-90s. I thought the technology was great. It is something different compared to the classic gear shift Vespas, and it was obvious that I wanted to deal with the modern Vespas early on. Okay, so far we've had the Vespa wide frame, the large frame and the small frame. Today we're talking about modern Vespa, and the first question is, how did it come to this point and what makes them different? Can you tell us a bit about the history of the modern Vespa? In 1969, the supposedly first modern Vespa came on the market. The term modern Vespa didn't really exist at that time. There was just the ET or ET4, the first model to hit the market. I think Piaggio just needed an upgrade at that time. The last completely redesigned model was the Vespa Cosa, which came out with a new engine and a modified frame at the beginning of the 90s. The PX models were built the same way until 2005. They had a small facelift, but Cosa was the last model in the gear shift sector, where design was important. We all know that the Cosa wasn't a big blockbuster. It was good, it was cool, but it didn't really break through. At the beginning of the 90s, the world was still alright. We remember France, where you were allowed to drive without a helmet, Italy, where you could drive without a helmet, at least the 50cc models. The 50s models in the Piaggio group itself only had the Piaggio Zip on the market. At that time, a Piaggio Sfera, so basically plastic on streets. For the 50th Piaggio anniversary, they needed a new model, and that was the ET. What is a modern Vespa? How do I recognize them? So, modern Vespa includes two words, modern and Vespa. I always associate the modern with an automatic engine, and the Vespa with the self-supporting body frame. The combination of both makes the modern Vespa. Compared to the old gear shift scooter models, the engine is quite significant. An automatic engine, as we can see here, mounted on the left side. On the classic models, it's on the right side, or the front area. We can see the steering column is mirrored. At the classic Vespa you put the wheels on from the side, at the modern Vespa it's on the other side. I think if I look at this whole frame, then it also looks a whole bunch bigger and heavier than the classic Vespas. The proportions are set larger. How much does such a Vespa weigh? This is one of the, I would say, small frames of modern Vespas. What does that weigh? So, you can roughly subdivide the modern Vespa as it is with the classic Vespas into small frame and large frame. So far, I've always been quite careful with the term, but there are really two basic frame shapes. Here we have the narrow frame, in comparison if you look at the one in the back, it has a larger frame, which also looks much more massive, and it's a lot heavier than the modern Vespa small frame. But when I look at the engine, I notice something very important. Not only that it just moved to the other side, 
I'm not quite sure, but I think the modern Vespa was only available as a four-stroke, is that right? No, no. So modern Vespas had in their own model series, especially in the early days, two and four-stroke 50cc engines. With the ET2 and the ET4 had four-stroke engines with 50cc and 125cc. LX models had 50cc engines and 125cc engines. That runs through the model series, except for the GT series, which was actually only available with a Dodge engine. But the general introduction of the four-stroke into the Vespas was an innovation with the modern Vespa. It didn't exist before with the classic Vespas. Indian productions, like LML, had four-stroke engines, but the actual classic Vespa had no four-stroke automatic. Engine. What is important when you switch to an automatic is that there is no longer a clutch. So when you roll up to a traffic light for the first time as a classic Vespa driver and you want to switch gears, you're surprised. Now we know what defines a modern Vespa. That means we'll come back to what the most important models of the series were. After all, it has been around for 25 years. That means a few models have come together, and I think that's why we're starting here, with this scooter. Exactly. We have a very special piece here, an ET. To be more specific, an ET4, 125cc, the second generation of the ET models. There was the ET2 with a 50cc two-stroke engine. The ET4 initially had a 125cc engine and later also a 50cc four-stroke engine. The 125cc ET4 models had two engine types. Here you really have to be careful when all the parts. There was the so-called ET4 old engine, recognizable by the frame number M04. The subsequent models had ZPC19. If you're not quite sure which ET4 you have, there's a very simple trick. Take a look here on the side. The old ones had an Olgor glass. The Olgor glass disappeared with the newer models, which had the leader engine. So, this is a new one, right? This is a new leader engine, air cooled, 125cc four stroke. About 1995 kmh fast. Okay, is it possible to tune that? If you can tune that, yeah, a bit. <laughs> what does the term ET actually stand for? Well, I don't know. Do you know that? Nope. I think four stands for four stroke, two for two stroke. Formerly, ET at the ET3 stood for E, electronic ignition. T, traversi. This is a four stroke. It has no overflow channel. Well, ET, to be honest, I really don't know what ET stands for. But I do know that the ET4 was sold around 1.2 million times worldwide until 2004. So it was quite the box office hit. Nice to know, in Asia the ET4 was not sold as an ET4 but as an ET8. The 4 is considered an unlucky number. In Mandarin it's very similar to Dai, and that's why they thought we're not selling the ET4 in China or Taiwan as an ET4 but as an ET8. Okay, similar here. Anyone who has ever ridden a two-wheeler and switched from a two-stroke to a four-stroke engine felt that it was a misfortune. Now here is the ET4. What comes after that? As I said, the ET4 was built until 2004 and also sold successfully. The ET4 was then replaced by the Vespa LX in a small frame segment. At that time, the LX was also available as 50cc and 125cc in the early days. The 125cc variant had an air-cooled leader engine. At some point, the 150cc version was created. In the 2010s, there was a small engine change when the 2 valve 125cc leader engine became a 3 valve engine. 
You also have to be a little careful here when you choose to tune your engine. But when I look at the scooter, I can see that the frame is still very similar to the previous model. But what I notice is that this is the first Vespa where the wheels are larger than 10 inches. Is that true? Exactly. The framework of the, the framework of the LX at first glance may be very similar to the ET models. But if you take a closer look, you can see that small changes have already been made here. For example, the size proportions of the indicators are a bit narrower. And as you have already correctly recognized, Jesko, the Vespa no longer has 10 inch but 11 inch tires in the front. Rather untypical. There's still 10 inch at the rear, so you always have the feeling that you are driving uphill, but it's not really like that. The fact that the frame is quite identical, it is possible to combine some parts from those model series with each other. Seats, for example, can be exchanged. Atom parts such as luggage racks, mirrors, windscreens, fly screens are changeable between the modern Vespa small frame models. Chronologically, the LX models came onto the market in 2004 and it had a sister model, the Vespa S. Their frame was quite identical. The main distinguishing criterion was the same as with the old small frame models. There was the V50 as a round light and then the special with the square headlight. Now it is similar with the LX models. So, there was the first model in 2004, the Vespa LX with a round headlight, and there's a sister model with the Vespa S with a square headlight. At that time, they were also available with a 50cc two stroke engine and 125 to 150cc four stroke engine. Okay, but there is also clearly the trend for Vespa to go back to this retro trend. That means using a name that already exists in the Vespa small frame world and also to get the form of the headlights close to the small frame special. Piaggio has done this really well. Over the years or in the last few years since the modern Vespa models have existed, they have repeatedly used small elements of old classics and tried to adapt it to the newer models. At the special model, the GT60, we can see the similarities to the Saigioni, where they kind of rebuilt that, but also with the individual models, where they only transferred, for example, the shape of the headlights. I'm not quite sure when, but at the same time the first larger modern Vespas were launched. Was that before the LX or after? So if you look at it chronologically, the ET was of course the first model on the market. And with the introduction of the next model, the GT series in 2003, the term modern Vespa was there for the first time. So you no longer had a model, you had a model family, and that is why you needed a term. So modern Vespa came about. Okay. Before the GT was just the ET4, but due to the fact that there were two models now, it was said that these are the actual modern Vespa models. Who said that? It's not entirely sure who invented the term. I only know that in a flyer from 2003, we first used modern Vespa as a term. So the GT is more or less the slightly larger modern Vespa. And that's what we're going to look at next, right? Exactly. Let's move over. Now, we are in front of the first large frame among the modern Vespa models. And as you can see, this model was delivered with a very eye-catching paint job. Is that correct? So we're actually facing a GT base here. Of course, it now has little in common with the original model, which is built in 2003. Back in 2003, I can still remember, we were all really excited. The first 200cc engine after the PX came onto the market as an automatic engine, again water-cooled. For us that was actually like, hey, something is happening here. And that in one at least the base is a GT. Quite significant, or how you can tell the later GTS models apart is that the side slits are missing here. Of course the SIP Podoi custom has almost nothing to do with the GT anymore. Everything has changed. 
The GT was built from 2003 and was available in a 125 and 200 cc version, which was already very powerful back then. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Pordoi Custom was never available. SIP turned 25 in 2019, and to celebrate this occasion, we built two custom scooters. Unfortunately, we did not have another GT close by for this video today, but it's a great opportunity to get this beauty in front of the camera again. I agree. It's not necessarily the worst model. The large frame of the modern Vespa, this whole GT GTS series, is for most fans the modern Vespa, because it has slightly larger engines. But then there were a lot of updates and models coming out, and what exactly the differences were, but then there were a lot of updates and models coming out, and what exactly the differences were, that Stefan will tell you now. So I was totally flashed when the first Vespa with 300cc, or to be precise with 278cc, came out on the market in 2008. That was a very nice announcement, a Vespa 4 stroke with a lot of power. At that time it was specified with 21 HP, except for the HPE models. I was quite impressed when I heard that. Now we have here one of the first GTS models. I don't know the year of its manufacturing, but this model was built from 2008 to 2013. You can see this quite significantly in the speedometer. The speeder of this model is slightly larger than the one of its successor models. How can I exactly differentiate the GT from the GTS? What is the most important feature? So externally, it's as I have already explained for the GT. The frame is ventilation slots on the right side of the GTS models. So again, Vespa has used features of all the models and then introduced those ventilation slots. At a point where they don't ventilate at all though, but look like it was the case with a VBB or Sprint. Okay. Just for the optic. And of course the engine. The engine. That was the leader engine, or already a Kassar engine. So in 2008 the first update of the GT series was a GTS 250, which was also available in a first ABS version, the 250cc version. They were already available in small numbers as ABS. And then after the 250cc, the 300cc. But now we have three different ones. What are the most important differences that come one after the other during the construction of the GTS? I think the most important factor is that they focus more on safety with the successor models. This is one of the last mods from 2018 with ABS, as you can see here. The tone wheel and these safety precautions make driving safer. That's my ride. And if I would switch from an ABS to an old GTS, I'd break here at the roundabout, I'd have to break differently. So it happened that I did a skid mark with an old GTS, and compared to my GTS, I didn't feel a thing. I can push the brakes as strong as I want. At some point the ABS switches on. Externally there are differences. So I've already explained the speedo. In the rear area they had the taillight and the license plate holder in the first version differently. The successor models have a taillight frame. The frame is not available on the first models. The first GTS models also had a slightly different license plate holder. You can convert old models to the new one, but you have to change the side panels and the license plate holder. So the basic shape of the frame has remained the same, but small details are different. Fundamentally, not much had changed in the engine up to 2018. A major milestone came in 2019 with the HPE.
This is a HP EVA 300cc. The difference to previous models, the HPE is specified with a Pro 25 HP factory specification, which you can also feel when you drive it. So the difference of a standard 300cc series built in 2019 to a 300 HP can be felt clearly, with the acceleration and high speed. How did Piaggio do it? On the one hand, there are different cylinder head with a different camshaft, which are much sharper. What are the most important differences that come during the construction of the GTS? They already had four valve heads, two inlet and two outlet valves. The HPE has a different mapping. But I think they have also changed a lot visually at the front. The cascade that is now pulled at the way down here as with the classic Vespas. You can see that here. The old ones had such a snub nose, and it was actually the case since the ET4. Over time, the modern Vespa models have always received a small update. A different cascade, a different speedo. There was also an intermediate model between 2014 and 2016. We refer to this in our model history as the FL, facelift model. They even had a different shock absorber mount. Since 2016, they went back to the previous shock absorber mount. But what distinguishes the HP significantly from the previous models is the cascade. This contour got moved down here. To be honest, I think it looks nice. I kind of like this little edge there. So we noticed. The whole modern Vespa started with the small, slim models 50cc and 125cc. This is a line that Vespa has of course also pursued with these two here. I think this is a line that Vespa has of course also pursued with these two here. I think these are the youngest models. That's right. In 2014 the Vespa Lakes and the Vespa S were replaced by two models. On the one hand by Vespa Primavera and the Vespa Sprint. The sister model, the Sprint S, with angular headlights, the frame looks slightly more sporty. Again, small changes. If you look at the LX, the whole thing is arranged much more angular here. The handlebars have changed, it is split in this area. The frame shape has also become a bit more angular at the back. The basic frame for the Vespa Sprint is the same. Just small individual components are different. I think that these are also very nice beginner scooters, simply because they are easy to ride. You can also see very clearly that Piaggio is increasingly making the modern Vespa look like more and more similar to the older models. It succeeded here in terms of design. It's nice. So, the two models here, the Vespa Primavera and the Vespa Sprint, were available in different engine variants, from 50cc to 125cc to 150cc four-stroke engines. The engines have changed a bit over time. The initial engines were actually still leader engines, two valve leader engines, three valve leader engines, to the last models that have the so-called iGET engine. But those models do only have four-stroke engines, right? Only four strokes. Due to the emission values, the two-stroke engines are no longer permitted, which is why these models in 50cc to 125cc are only available as four-stroke versions. The Vespa Electrica is a small special model. I think it belongs to this series, the 50cc electric vehicle. Correspondent to the current zeitgeist, Vespa moves with the times. Where the journey goes with the electric motor, we don't know, but every dealer has it. Yes, the electrica. It looks like this one, I think. I was allowed to drive it on the EICMA two years ago. It just drives like an electric scooter drives. It just rides like an electric scooter rides. In any case, this represents the current status or endpoint of the development of the Vespa. And with that, we have explained roughly what has happened. In any case, this represents the current status or endpoint of the development of the Vespa. And with that, 
We have explained roughly what has happened in the past 25 years of the modern Vespa era and what the most important models were. But now, for many customers, and maybe one of the most important questions, we have engines that have brought in a lot of electronics over time. Can you still tune them, or is that no longer possible with the electronics? So if you go into the engine history of the modern Vespa large frame models, it all started with the 125cc leader engine, followed by a 200cc leader engine, with the GT and this Quasar engine, starting from 250cc. The first models of the GTS are Euro 3. And we were already very, very strong back then because the cuts in terms of emissions and exhaust valves are not too high. With the successor models, of course, you had to comply to the values given and whether they regulate in the injection system, in the electronics. In terms of tuning, the drive differs very little, from the first models to the last models. Electronic is the crucial keyword. He wanted to say swear word. Did you hear that? He was so close. So, we have provided you with all the information that is important about the modern Vespa. Stefan, can you think of anything else that you would like to add? Of course, we haven't addressed everything. 25 years cannot be summarized in a 10 minute video. But we really explained the most important stuff. My tip for you, if you have a modern Vespa, if you need parts, take a look at our web shop. We have explained everything there, as well as the usage lists of each one of our individual products. And if you're still unsure afterwards, you're welcome to call us on the hotline. We have one or the other technician who will be happy to assist you with the tricky questions. Perfect. Then I thank you, Stefan, very much for your time. To you, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, press the bell and subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Bye. Have a good trip.